In this video, I'm going to make a non-playing character that can detect whether it's close to somebody and then give them a little greeting. So he's just saying, hey Earl, hey Simtech Gamer 7 hey Bill, there we go. So I am going to leverage off of this game right here. I'm going to put the link in the description. It is from the video, um, is it create an NPC that can run. So if you did that video, you can use your, your guy or create NPC that can run. If you don't have it or it didn't work, just use a simple AI, simple patrol AI, and then hit these three dots, hit edit, and it'll open up your game in Roblox Studio. I have a copy and we'll, I'll use that one. So you'll get this exact game if you open that up. And here, I wanna make a little dialogue box to say stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of this Ralph AI name tag just go to Ralph AI, go to Humanoid, and under Display Distance Type, just hit None, and that'll get rid of it. And I have a few scripts in here. I have the Animate script that I made, and the Simple Move, which just has them running around a track. I did that in that video, in that other video. But we're gonna keep all that there. And we're going to add something to the head. We're gonna add a Billboard GUI to the head, my Billboard GUI. Go ahead and click on it, and then add a text label. You can see it's really big, even when you get close. So on the billboard GUI, I'm gonna call this dialog GUI, and I'm gonna change the size. Let's see, size, I'll open size up, and I'll make it zero and 80 pixels. So I'm gonna make them absolute pixels. That's on the X, and then zero and 40 pixels on the Y. Go to studs offset, open that up, change the Y to a two, from zero to two, and it pops it up above his head. Now, let's go to our text label, and I'm on size already. So rather than making this absolute pixels, I'll make it on the X one and zero, on the Y one and zero. So that's gonna make the text label 100% the size of the billboard GUI. So now if I wanna change the size, I'll have to change it in one place. All right. Let's go up to near the top and make the background transparency of the text label. So I want a text label, one, so that it's transparent. And then let's go down to font, bangers. That's a good font. Uh, text label, I'll keep that there while I'm actually making my font so I can see how big it is. I'm gonna do text, text scaled. All right, and then change the text color three to something different if you want. I'm gonna make it green, All right? And then I can't really see that very well, so I'm gonna put this um, text stroke transparency to zero, and that'll give it a little outline around the letters. All right, now, now that I know what I got, I'm gonna get rid of the text in the text label because I'm gonna populate that when I get close to somebody. I'm gonna say, hey, and then whoever it is that I'm close to, or hi, whoever I'm close to. Cool, we got that. Let's go to our Ralph AI. Let's add a module script. This is gonna hold all of our AI functions, right? So I'm gonna change my module script to AI lib. And AI lib, this is the table name that gets returned from the module script. That's how we're gonna call things when we require it. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna make a function, not local function. I'm gonna prepend with AI lib, colon, find nearest NPC. I'm gonna pass in my AI NPC guy, right? And I'm gonna pass in a distance of interest. So it'll ignore everything beyond a certain distance. And let's make a variable. I'm going to search on humanoid root parts because I can find the position very easily in the world. So I'll say closest, whoops, closest HRP will be nil because that's the one we're going to try and find. And I'll say local AI NPC HRP. So that's my AI's humanoid root part. AI NPC, whoops, NPC humanoid root part. Now, I didn't do a find first child. 
because I know I'm going to pass in my character here. I know he's going to have a humanoid root part, and I know it's on the server side, so I don't really have to wait for it. So I don't have to do a wait for child or anything. All right, now I'm going to do a for loop. I'm going to do a for loop in pairs. So for i and v in pairs, I'm going to search the workspace and get all the children. Now this isn't a really um, efficient way of doing things. It's going to get the first level of everything in the workspace, but that's where all the characters are. It's not going to search in models and stuff, but it's still going to look through a lot of stuff it doesn't need to. We are going to want to make this more optimum by passing in um, a player and non-player list, so it won't take so long. But it won't be too bad. This is a good place to start. So let's see if we have an HRP. So this is going to be numbers, one, two, three, four. This is a key value pair. This is going to be the objects that it goes through in the workspace. And it could be a house or it could be a player. So what I'm going to do, V, I'm going to find a first child that's a humanoid root part. Now, if it's a house or something, it's not going to have that. This HRP will be nil. If it is a character, it will have an HRP. It will have a humanoid root part. So we are going to check. I'm going to say if HRP, then let's get the distance between this humanoid root part and that humanoid root part. That's our AI. So we're going to find the distance between them. I'm going to call it temp distance because I'm not going to save the distance after this function executes. I'll say AI NPC humanoid root part position minus my HRP that I found position. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Hopefully you can still see it. And then I'm going to do dot magnitude smaller still. There we go. So the magnitude just reduces the, um, these are two vectors that are being uh, subtracted. So you're going to have an x, y, and a z coordinate. The magnitude is actually going to get the distance between those two players because it's going to turn the vector into a scalar. You don't have to understand that. Just know that it's the distance. So where do we got? We got my temp distance. So if the temp distance is less than the distance of interest and temp distance is greater than one. So the reason I want to make sure that it's greater than one, I don't want to find myself. One of these V's is going to be me because I am in the world. My, 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 non, my AI guy is in the world. AI guy doesn't want to find himself. It's always going to be zero. He's always going to be closest. So we have to exclude him. Um, if we do find somebody who is in the distance of interest, but greater than one stud away, then we'll say distance of interest is now the temp distance. So we're only going to look at things closer than the last person we found. Right? And we'll store the HRP in the closest HRP. It's going to keep looping through. Finally, this will be the closest person or, an, or character. We're going to return it, closest HRP. And now let's do something with it. So we have this nice little library function where we can find the closest, the closest non-playing character. Let's go to Ralph AI, and I'm going to add a script, a regular script, not a module script, not a local script, a regular script. And this is going to be update loop. Eventually, we'll make that the state machine, and we'll do all the move functions in here. Right now, we're, we're just going to rely on our simple move to move them around. All right, I can make this a little bigger. All right, so in here, what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to require our AI lib. So we'll say local AI lib require script.parent.ai lib. So now we have access to that function we created. So local char, that's going to be our AI guy, script.parent, um, local text label, it's going to be on the characters. The char is a character, head, and there's a dialog GUI, and on that there's a text label. That's what we're going to update. Let's say while. Let's do a little wait in here, right? So we'll induce a wait in our while loop so we don't uh, crash our program. So we'll do 0.1 seconds. The local closest HRP 
use our AI lib to find that, find nearest NPC. I should actually just return the non-playing character, but you get the idea. This will work. I mean, I like using the humanoid root part. If the closest HRP exists, <clears throat> then let's uh, go ahead and say hi. All right, so we have text label dot text, hi, space, dot dot. That's a string concatenator, and let's put the guy we found. Let's put his name there. So that's the humanoid root part. The parent is the character, and the name is the name of the character. And then else, we don't find anybody. Let's go ahead and clear the text out. And there we go. So now we are good to go. We can go ahead. Let's put somebody in the world. So we can test it with a non-playing character and us. So if you are on home, click on plugins, build rig. You could do either R16 or R15 or R6. I'm gonna do a mesh rig. There we go. Let's call him Jimbo. Jimbo. I'll put some body colors on him. Oops. Hit the plus sign. Hit a B body colors he'll be the green shirt guy looking good all right let's test go to home play guy and my, our little ai guy should be running around saying hi to people there we go he's running around the loop hi jimbo that worked hi simtech gamer all right that's pretty cool so now you can find that now that you can find the closest uh player or non-playing character you can start doing stuff in the next video, what I want to do is something a little more complicated. I want him to break out of the patrol function. I want him to break out of this track. And that's going to be kind of interesting because now you can start interacting in a different way.